Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk a little bit more about food shortages, food price increases. I keep seeing these crazy low inflation rates, yet every time I go to the grocery store I'm seeing prices double, triple, even quadruple what they were 6 to 12 months ago. I own a small business in the service industry and some of my employees are saying I can hardly handle the dramatic increases in my grocery budget. So today I wanted to talk about something that I'm hoping will get your wheels turning. Grab a piece of paper and your favorite pen and let's jump into the topic of growing your own food, growing a year's worth of food, whether you are on a big sprawling piece of land or in a little high rise apartment. I want to start off by reminding you to reach out to your local farmers, reach out to your local homesteaders who maybe are producing more than their family has room to store up and find your local growers, whether that is for raw dairy, meat, eggs, or produce, there is a good chance there are local producers near you that you can support and in turn get fresh local produce and you're not having to depend as heavily on the grocery store. Two things I've been trying to focus on as we have been building up our food storage, particularly in light of the news media and all over the internet, reports of a global food crisis and food shortages on the horizon. So something that we've been trying to keep in mind is what can we grow and what are things that we will not be growing? We can't grow oats. We're not going to grow rice or olives for olive oil. So those are definitely things that we are going to be stocking up on in our pantry. But what about things like wheat? Now obviously, if you live in an apartment, you cannot probably grow your own wheat. But my husband and I went to a homestead conference a few weeks ago, and I don't even remember exactly what was said that made me think about this, but I picked up my phone, did a few Google searches, and got my calculator out and realized we can grow enough wheat for an entire year for our family of 10 on a quarter acre of land. And it only takes about 35 pounds of wheat to get that much. It would be about 650 pounds. Of course, we can grow a variety of fruits, berries, and tons of vegetables. Now, before you turn this video off and think, well, I don't have growing space, I don't have room for a garden, I live in an apartment or in the city, don't write me off too fast. There are so many ways you can grow your own food. There are community garden spaces in cities and in large neighborhoods, and you can grow so many things in containers, whether that be a five gallon bucket, an old used flower pot. I've even seen people take a large bag of soil, lay it flat on their porch or their back deck, cut a giant rectangle in the top of the bag and plant directly in that. That's brilliant. You know how much lettuce and spinach and kale you could grow on that kind of surface? We have four plastic urns on our front porch that I picked up at Lowe's a few years ago for about $12 a piece. I'm sure they're a little bit more now, but we grow all of our salad greens on the porch in these four plastic urns, whether it be a variety of lettuce, spinach, kale. Four urns seemed to be the perfect sweet spot for our family. We have at least one main dish salad per week, and as long as I leave just the inner leaves of each plant, then within another week, they've all grown back enough to have a whole nother big salad for our size family. Now, when I say main dish salad, I mean the salad is our dinner, like a big taco salad or a big gr grilled chicken Caesar salad. The flowers you see here are from a Tom Thumb variety of lettuce that I got from Baker Creek. This lettuce lasted all winter and has now gone to seed, and I let it go to seed because it clearly is a very winter hardy lettuce that I want to grow every winter from here on out. So I let it go to flower, and I'm going to collect the seed and make sure I save that for next year. Now, to save even more money, you don't have to fill those whole pots or those whole urns with good soil. You could put sticks and rocks and other organic materials in the bottom half of those containers and then top off the top half with good soil and compost. Let's start with sweet potatoes. 
This is an amazing plant. Sweet potatoes will store in your pantry for months and months without any special conditions needed. These sweet potatoes, most of them in my garden this year, I started from slips that I grew on my kitchen windowsill from sweet potatoes that were left over from the grocery store from Thanksgiving of 2021. That's pretty incredible. And we live in the South where it's warm and humid and these sweet potatoes are actually still going strong on my windowsill right now. So each one of these plants that I put in the ground will produce approximately four sweet potatoes each. This is gonna be a lot of sweet potatoes for my family and I look forward to storing them in the pantry for as long as possible. And I look forward to updating you on how many we end up harvesting and how long they store and how all the different ways that we use them. So I would highly suggest if you have room planting sweet potatoes. As these vine out, Sweet potato vines don't actually climb on their own, but I put them against the fence on purpose this year so that I can weave them in and out of this uh, garden fencing and I will help them go up and over the garden fence and not take up valuable floor space within the garden area. Sweet potatoes take between 90 and 120 days before they're ready for harvest. I had a goal last year of growing a year's worth of bulb onions. It seemed like a pretty easy task and onion sets from places like Tractor Supply are super cheap. You can buy a bag of 80 onion sets for about $3. and. I was pretty successful last year, but a lot of my bulbs were pretty small. So I just diced up the small ones, put them in the dehydrator and ground them up for onion powder. My family typically goes through three to five bulb onions a week year round. So I'm looking forward to seeing how successful this year's harvest is compared to last. Bulb onions take anywhere from 100 to 120 days before they are ready for harvest. You'll know they're ready when their tops fall over. Tomato products are definitely second in line for what my family goes through the most with regards to fresh produce and pantry items. We use a lot of marinara sauce, crushed tomatoes, salsa, barbecue sauce, ketchup. We're going to try all of those things this year. I'm hoping for a record-breaking year with our tomatoes. I planted around 80 plants and I would say about 70 of those are Roma varieties that are the best for canning and storage. You can typically start harvesting tomatoes 60 to 80 days after they've been planted, depending on the variety. If you have the space to grow potatoes, I would highly recommend it. They can be grown in raised beds, five gallon buckets, old flower pots. In ideal growing conditions, one chunk of seed potato can produce five to 10 pounds of potatoes. Living in the South and not having a root cellar, I primarily pressure can our potatoes. Some of them I'll blanch and freeze, but most of them I pressure can. This year I do intend to experiment a bit and I'm going to use a Rubbermaid tote lined with sawdust and I'm going to put layers and layers of sawdust and potatoes that have been cured in the pantry or maybe even in the closet in my master bedroom to see how long they will last in dry cool storage. Potatoes take between 90 and 120 days before they're ready for harvest, but you can always dig up a few at a time when you need them for supper. This year we decided to put up a large trellis for our peas and our pole beans. I've got one growing up one side and the other growing up the other side, and I'm hoping for a big harvest. Last year was the final year I will ever plant bush beans, as far as I can tell, because I just don't end up harvesting them. It's not convenient or fun to get down on your hands and knees and pick all of those bush beans when the, the plants get big and it's hot and the pest pressure is intense. Pole beans will produce up to six or seven pounds per plant, and they're ready for harvest in less than 65 days. You can succession plant beans and peas and have them growing almost year round. Now peas do not like the intense heat, so I probably won't get a whole lot of harvest before they bolt and die off. And in that case, I will then plant more pole beans. I love planting squash and zucchini. They are such hardy producers and they're always one of the first vegetables ready for harvest in the garden. Now this year I planted 
a whole lot more winter squash than I ever have before with the intention of putting them up and storing them as supplemental feed for our chickens and pigs in the fall. That includes butternut squash, acorn squash, and spaghetti squash. Of course, I'm also growing the traditional yellow squash and zucchini for summer eating. But I currently have one last spaghetti squash in my pantry that I harvested last July. This year, I planted a 30-foot row of ground cherries. Let me know in the comments below if you've heard of ground cherries or ever eaten them. I think sometimes they're called golden berries if you buy them at the store. I know Trader Joe's occasionally sells them in the summer. But I planted ground cherries with the intention of canning them somewhat like a sweet fruit. Now they are a little bit tart, but you can add sugar to make pie filling and jams. So I'm looking forward to experimenting with ground cherries this year. Each plant can produce up to 300 ground cherries and they take about 70 days to harvest, but they continue to produce all the way up until your first frost. Of course, a summer garden in the south would not be complete without melons, so this year I planted four or five watermelon and four or five cantaloupe. There's never a guarantee that mine are going to produce anything. They take a lot of water and fertilizing, and they also have pretty heavy pest pressure, so it remains to be seen whether or not we will actually enjoy any watermelon or cantaloupe. If you have an in-ground or even raised bed garden on your property, then you probably have experience with volunteer plants. This year, it was really fun to see where our volunteers came up and what varieties. I still don't know exactly what varieties of tomatoes are coming up. This is the area where we kept our chickens last year, so it's probably Roma or cherry tomatoes. But they're all doing well, and I decided to just let them grow and see what they produce. I also found some ground cherries from last year in a completely different part of the garden. In fact, some of them made it to the outside of the garden, and I'm just gonna let them go and see how well they produce. This bed is looking pretty rough, but this is our blueberry patch. We have six or seven blueberry plants. The one with the red tomato cage around it was mowed down by the lawnmower multiple times and somehow survived, so we're giving it every chance possible to thrive this year and grow up bigger and stronger. If you have the space for perennials such as berries, fruit trees, herbs, I would suggest definitely using that space for edibles rather than ornamentals. This is my herb garden. It's on the side of the house where there's also some pretty plants like gardenias and this border of lamb's ear. But I also have sage planted as you can see here which has beautiful purple blooms. This year we are enjoying the harvest of herbs that dropped seeds last year and have come back up this year. They are not technically perennial herbs, but because the seeds fell from last year's plants, I didn't pull them as they bolted and went to flower. And our winters are not so harsh that it kills the seeds. And they've come back in abundance this year. We have sage, cilantro, parsley, dill, calendula, and chamomile. Fruit trees are definitely something that takes patience because you're not going to start seeing a big harvest for years to come. But if you have the space to put in fruit trees, I recommend doing it as soon as possible because the sooner you put it in the ground, the sooner you will have a harvest for your family for years and years to come. I really hope I've got you thinking about how you can grow something no matter where you are. Not only that, but be thinking about what you can grow year round, whether that be carrots, beets, potatoes, tomatoes, zucchini or squash. Do a little research on what vegetables have the shortest days to harvest and what does best in your area. In most cases, it's never too late to put some seeds in the ground. Thanks for watching.